What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. Tools are amazing, but what if we could enhance them? Better, stronger, faster. I really strive to not accidentally cut my face off whenever I'm using my tools, so I want to enhance my miter saw so I can safely cut small parts without, you know, what I'm envisioning is a fence and then a panel that sticks out further than the blade. And then I could take my clamps and be able to clamp from different angles to cut all my pieces. I need to take into account how far the blade sticks out and make sure my panel sticks out further than that. Also, how tall the fence is gonna be because I can't have the fence taller than uh, right here or the saw won't cut all the way down. No need to go crazy with this. I'm using some MDF. So I've got the bottom panel there. That looks good. Also cut a fence. So the plan is I'm gonna take these and glue these dudes together. I might throw some screws or nails in there. I don't know, depends on what I got in the shop, but essentially just making a big L. So what I wanna do is have my clamp be able to ride on the fence or on the base, depending on what I'm cutting. So I think I'm gonna go over to the router table and throw in a dovetail bit and cut a dovetail all the way across both those. That way my clamp can just slide in and I can move it wherever I want to. The glue is dry, and then the good thing about the dovetails is that different bolts will fit in there, so if you have different types of clamps, it all works. Like, this is a quarter-inch bolt, just a regular quarter-inch bolt. That fits in there really good, and you can't spin it around, which is perfect for having some sort of knob or something on it. You can also just get bolts that are uh, rectangle-shaped, which are specifically made for something like this. That works great. I'm going to use one of these lever clamps, which are pretty handy to have. I stole this from my CNC because I don't really use it a whole lot. I'll see if I can find an affordable pair. I'll drop a link down in the description below if you want to check them out. They're kind of handy to have around. Put a groove in the fence and in the base so there's different ways to hold pieces depending on what the piece is. This dude just sits right there, super simple. Take some clamps, clamp it to the fence or clamp it to the front or clamp it to the fence in the front. Doesn't matter, whatever works for your miter saw. And then the clamp simply slides right into our groove, lock it down. And then we can cut our pieces without cutting our face off. This next one is really, really simple. It takes just a couple minutes to do, but I can't live without it, which is anytime I get a new router, I will replace this base plate because I think this is crap. I'd rather have one that is a little bit bigger and ideally see-through so I can see what I'm doing. I've got a piece of quarter inch stick acrylic here, so I'm just gonna cut it into a square to make a new base plate for this. As far as the size goes, it's kind of up to whatever size you want. It's not a bad idea to have different sizes uh, on standby so you can easily just attach it whenever you need to for different size projects. Who knows? Set the plate and the screws to the side because we're going to need that later. No need to reinvent the wheel. We'll just use our router plate here and draw some circles where we need to drill things out at. What's really important is our screws cannot be protruding from our base, because if they are, then our base won't be able to slide around. So what I'm gonna do is take a bigger bit and drill it out, make sure that it's at least the size of the screw head, drill those out, and then come back with a smaller bit and drill out the center of those. Then I know that my screws will definitely be able to fit down inside the base. Super simple, really fast upgrade, but I'm telling you, if you've never made a router base for your router, it's gonna change the world. One of my favorite tools is the spindle sander, but there's a problem with mine, which is it has this weird triangly top and it's all rounded and it, it doesn't really work for me because whenever I'm using it, I end up falling off of the edge. Well, you could get some that have these square or rectangle tops, but they're a lot more expensive, so I figure, I'll look online and see if I can find one that has a rectangle top that's kind of affordable. Uh, huh? What? What? Uh, what's going on here? Did all of these come from the same exact factory? Well, I guess I'm just gonna enhance mine. So what I'm thinking is a new top, have it stick out a little bit further, have it squared off so I have more work surface. Now, I know somebody could argue that if you put a top on it, it raises it up so you use less of your drum. Well, I'm gonna make it where it's removable. So that's fine. If I need that extra capacity, not a big deal. But I also think that by having a top on it, it's actually gonna make it so that I use the drum better. Most of the wear and tear comes on the ends of the drum because you know the drum 
is like this, it's going up and down, you sand it, and then once that gets worn out, you could always flip it over and sand there, but you don't use a whole lot of it right here in the middle. But if I raise the base up by putting a new top on it, now I'm using this part, so I'm actually gonna use more of the drum than before. Making the top itself is pretty simple. I'm just gonna grab a piece of MDF and I need to cut a big enough circle so that I can put my inserts and remove those in. I think I'm gonna use the scroll saw to do mine, but you could also use a jigsaw because it doesn't have to be pretty, just needs to be a big enough opening to get your insert in there. Draw us a big circle. Time to cut it out. To keep things simple, I could just use some magnets to hold the top on here. That would work just fine. But I did talk in my last video about trying new things, trying new techniques. So instead, I think I want to make something that bends around this contour of the lid. So I found this scrap piece of oak. I think I'm gonna slice this down the length of it, maybe make it about five eighths of an inch thick. And then I can cut curves all the way down the length. And that should allow me to bend it around this, make it form fitting, glue it to the top, and then it just slides on top, should fit in place, and if I need to clamp it, I can. Got out of the clamp, so I wanna see how easy it is to get on and off. So if I just set that on there like that, that fits pretty good. And it doesn't move at all, so I don't even need to clamp that. That's pretty cool. Now you could put an insert in here so it's like a zero clearance face, so that way if you're sanding, it doesn't, pieces don't fall in there. But I don't think I'm gonna do that because if I did have to drill a bunch of holes for dust collection, and the whole point in this is so that I have a, a larger top for bigger pieces so they don't tip over on the side. So if I had a, a piece here, I could sand it, and then, you know, it's not going to fall down in this hole. If I'm doing a little piece, I remove the top, then I do the little pieces, so not a big deal. Last thing I'll probably do is just sand over the corners at some point so I don't accidentally impale myself, but overall, pretty happy with it. The next enhancement is a micro adjuster that you can use different ways at the table saw and even at the router table. There are probably a hundred different ways to make something like this. I'm gonna make mine as simple and as quickly as possible. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of scrap wood and a few pieces of hardware. For the hardware, I got a 5 16th diameter, 12 inch threaded rod, a couple of random nuts, a wing nut, a couple threaded inserts, and then one of these doohickeys that you put on the end of it. I cut two blocks. This is the end grain on the side. So this is actually face grain here because the board was like this and then I cut the pieces off. So these are about uh, two inches tall and one and three eighths wide, somewhere around that. Doesn't have to be perfect. So the plan is to take these, stick them together with some double-sided tape, go over to the drill press, drill a hole down in it. Then I can break them apart and put threaded inserts into each one. Then we can put the rod all the way through and now we've got two pillars for the rod to fit through. As far as where to drill at, I'm just gonna mark the center of this and then mark the same all the way down from the top. Drill that out right there. I'm gonna add a nut so it bumps up to this one. And another one until it bumps up to this one. Another one towards the end here. And then I can put my wing nut on, tighten these dudes together. There we go, we got a handle. And then this guy goes here on the end. Now I'm gonna take this and glue it onto a piece that's about the same width, about four inches wide, so that I have plenty of room for my clamp head to clamp in between these two pillars. The jig is simply clamped onto the rail with a regular clamp, 
and it's thin enough that it is in that space between the fence and the end of the rail. So if you slide your fence out, see, usually your fence will have one of these things here. Clamp it down. Now, it also has the wing nut here for a handle, so you would just loosen up one of these nuts, depending on which direction you want to turn it to. Turn the handle, tighten the nut, move your fence, good to go. If you want to make it even better, add some magnets to the top. That way you can always put it upside down on your table saw, and now you have a thin strip jig, so you can adjust it, set it perfectly to cut really thin strips safely at the table saw. Our next shot made improvement is something that is easy to make. You can do it quickly and it gets you really good cuts, which is a straight edge for the jigsaw. I've made a lot of these for my circular saw, but I use my jigsaw a whole lot more and well, I need one, so I'm gonna make it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's really easy. I use my jigsaw for just about every project to break down rough lumber or cut down a slab. So I don't really need a long jig for this. I'm just gonna use a piece of MDF. This will work fine. The good thing about this is it's so easy to make that you could just go ahead and make a long one or a couple short ones or whatever else, depending on the project and whatever you need. I'm gonna put the jigsaw up against my MDF until the blade is touching the edge here. Just place a mark over here on this side. I know that that's about where I need to put my fence at. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add about three inches or so onto this. So that means I'm gonna take my panel and cut it down this line right here. I can take my off cut, glue it onto here, then we'll have a straight edge. You can glue your jig together or you can just pop a couple screws in there. Kind of depends on just how quick you need it, I guess. Put a square up to it, clamp it down. Perfectly smooth against the edge there. Not too bad. It even reduced the frain that a jigsaw can really cause whenever you're cutting lumber. It's a really good cut there. That performed pretty good. And there's a couple things you could do to kind of soup it up a bit if you want to. You could put some sandpaper on the bottom. That way it doesn't move around as much on the, the wood. I would still clamp it, but it's an option. Another thing is you could put a guide and glue a guide to the bottom. Just put a square up to it, put the guide on there. And then when you set it on your board, you know it's automatically at 90 degrees. I don't do that because I kind of like to have mine free because I can then move it at different angles depending on what I want to do. But hey, teach their own. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and to meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.